Okay, so let's talk about four tips for creating your first coaching program as an HSP or an empath. My name is Adam Mitchell Hart, and I help HSBs and empaths gain the confidence and business strategy necessary in order to launch successful businesses as coaches or healers through my Superhero Coaching Academy. Now, when I started out as a coach, I didn't have a plan for a coaching program. I was winging it, and I was doing these one-off sessions with people who wanted to get new jobs with better pay, with better companies, and I was just sort of piecemealing it together, just, okay, uh, what do you need help with today? Okay, let me see if I can help you. Uh, Okay, and I would sort of fumble my way through this process, and maybe I helped them, maybe I didn't. It was really hard to say because it was not an orchestrated process. Process. Now, with the help of a business coach and a lot of trial and error, I've really fine-tuned and perfected the art of a cohesive coaching program that's designed to deliver somebody the specific results that they're after, no matter how challenging it may seem. And it's really quite consistent in the outcomes that people receive. So, let's dive in. So you can save yourself months of wasting time and energy going in the wrong direction. And make sure to stick around to the end where I'll be sharing details about an offer for an exercise to help you choose your niche so you can figure out your target audience that you'd like to serve as a coach. And so tip number one is to prepare a welcome email for your clients where you're going to tell them what to expect, you're going to share with them a questionnaire that's designed to uncover uh, what it is that they're uh, experiencing, what it is, any relevant information that's gonna help you understand where to begin with somebody. So this is step one, before the program even begins, you want to lay the groundwork set the foundation, set the expectations, uh, provide them with details of the program, the outline, here's what we're gonna do in week one, two, three, four, and so on. Any additional resources, I like to send suggested reading, like a book relevant to the journey that we're gonna go on. I always recommend The Alchemist because my clients, they go on a journey of following their calling and achieving their personal legend, as explained in this book. So it's a handy guide to supplement the work that we're gonna do. I also send them details to an online course that's going to include video tutorials and written guidelines on how to become a coach and set up a coaching business and how to coach and deliver results and all the different skills and Uh, resources that I'm not going to want to repeat on every single call. So make sure you share that information with your clients so that come week one, you're going to know exactly where to start and they're not going to feel lost and confused about where they're supposed to be and and what they need to be learning. Okay, so the second tip is to create a framework. This is super important. Until you have some sort of a game plan or framework in place, you're gonna be flying blind and your client's gonna feel that. It's not gonna build a whole lot of trust and rapport and it's just gonna jeopardize the whole experience. So make sure you've clearly outlined the progression. And I would suggest if this is your first program Two months is a good time frame, but really you want to select a time frame that is appropriate for your client's objective. When I was working as a career coach, I offered a one-month program if somebody was mostly focused on interview prep for jobs that they were already interviewing for. If somebody wanted to change their career, well, that took a lot more time, so I created a three-month program with all the steps in between necessary to get them from point A to point B. 
by Superhero Coaching Academy fits nicely into a two-month program. It isn't so comprehensive that people have to wait three months before they can get started on starting their coaching business. And it's not so simple or basic that once they are, it is time for them to get to work, they're not feeling underprepared. So determine the length of your program. And then it's quite as simple as baking in one hour calls each week. I suggest doing it um, setting a standard day and time for consistency. And then you sketch out what you'd like to cover on each call. So I'll give you an example. In my Superhero Academy, there are a number of bases that we need to cover. For an HSP or empath who wants to become a coach, There's the personal development, stepping into their power. There's the business strategy. There's understanding and claiming their gifts and all the things in between where it needs to really build on itself. So week one is getting to know them and understanding their talents and abilities. Week two is explaining the basics of creating a business. Week three is stepping into the role of coach. Week four is workshopping your coaching model, kind of like we're doing today. Week five is how to coach. Week six, how to enroll clients. Week seven, implementation of all the things that we've been learning. And week eight, manifestation. How to use the law of attraction to make all of this come together and be successful. So that's just one example (coughs) of a framework. Yours could look very different, but just make sure that you're covering all the, the key topics and subjects that you know are going to be important ingredients to your client's success. I wouldn't want to focus all eight weeks on just personal development for someone who wants to become a coach. Yes, they might be super empowered by the end of it, but if they don't have the business skills and strategy in place, then they're not going to be successful. They're not going to achieve their results. But if I focus only on business strategy for eight weeks, they're not going to have the confidence and belief in themselves and leadership ability to, to be successful. And if they don't understand what their talents and gifts are, well, they're not going to understand how to coach most effectively or, or be confident in themselves. So that's why it's important to cover all of your bases here so that uh, your clients will achieve the result that they want. Now, this next tip might surprise you (laughs) because it directly contradicts the second tip. But really, it works alongside with it. And that is to be prepared to ditch the script. (laughs) At every point along this journey, you really have to be in tune with your client. And this is where being an HSP empath is really going to um, be a major strength and benefit. Because at the start of every call, what you want to do is check in with your client. Ask them, how are they doing? How was this past week for you? How are you feeling? And just get a pulse. If they're feeling good, present, motivated, happy, calm, You've got all green lights to take them through your process because they're going to be focused, they're going to be present, and they're going to have the good energy necessary to, to take action that's going to bear fruit. Now, if you're checking in with them and they say, well, you know, I had a hard time getting out of bed this morning, or... They say something like, yeah, I, I'm just really, really stressed right now. I had, had this thing come up yesterday, and I, I don't know what to do. So, obviously, if somebody is going through an emotional upset like that, they're not going to be able to take in your game plan, your information, and it's going to be useless. And whatever actions that they take from this stressed or sad place is not going to be effective because their heart's not in it. This is really important. This is These are the intangibles that are so vital to understand. So 
it's important to know that unless your client is feeling good, these emotions are cleared and, and they're feeling calm, settled, confident, happy, they don't have to be healed of whatever has been afflicting them, but they do need to, to feel good enough about themselves. And until they do, the work that you're going to do is, is going to fall a little flat. So be prepared to ditch the script to troubleshoot this emotional upset. And guys, sometimes it takes 5, 10, 15 minutes to just hear somebody out and allow someone to just say, yeah, well, you know, um, my dog died yesterday and, and it was really sad and I'm just, I'm kind of grieving right now. You hold space for them to share where they're at so they can feel seen and heard and then they can move on instead of having this in the background where they're just like, yep, yeah, mm, everything's okay, okay. Yeah, let's go through this program and the whole time they're carrying this burden. You can relieve them of this burden by just checking in. Or if they just, they tell you, well, yeah, I'm really stressed out because I, I got fired yesterday and I don't know what I'm gonna do for income. If it's something more major, then you, you stop the presses and you focus on that and you say, okay, well, well, let's talk about that. You know, what happened? Okay, and what, what's your game plan? What, how are you going to move forward from this? You could spend the entire hour helping them sort through their emotions about job loss and putting an action plan together for getting a new job so that by the end of that call, they're feeling good. And then the next call, you can pick up where you left off on your game plan and they're feeling, feeling good about their life because they know what to do. So really important tip there. And then lastly, maybe the most important tip, this is the secret hidden ingredient that I bake into all of my client engagements. That's my favorite part of it because it's the magic sauce. This is the secret sauce. This is weaving in the law of attraction. Okay? So you have a game plan. You're ditching the script. You're checking in. You're doing the questionnaires. All this clever stuff. <coughs> Lastly, what you want to do is make sure that they're getting clear on, on their ability to achieve their outcome. You have to inspire your clients to believe in themselves and to believe in the outcome that they're after. What I like to say is, is to keep your eyes on the prize. This is what I always tell my clients. Keep your eyes on the prize. Okay, in my superhero coaching academy, that prize would be that feeling of being confident as a coach or a healer. Or it could be that feeling of being successful as a coach or a healer. We're painting a picture starting from that questionnaire from day one of who it is that they wish to become and what life they wish to experience. And this whole time, I'm reminding them of this, okay? Through each module, the homework, the exercises, the coaching, I'm reinforcing the reasons why they should believe that they're going to become this person, that in fact they already are this person, and that their, their success is a given. It's inevitable. Because once they reach this point of inevitability, guys, your job is done. You might be four weeks into an eight-month program, excuse me, eight-week program. They're going to guide themselves to the finish line. You just get to, you know, steer them along the way. But that is the most important part is to get them to believe in themselves and the outcome. Okay, so now that you're ready to create your first signature coaching program that you can feel confident will deliver the results they are looking for. And if you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel now. And if you'd like to know how to choose your niche, then click on the link in the description for a free exercise that includes five key questions that you'll need to think through before you can get clear on your target 
audience. Super important. Without this piece in place, you don't have a business. So click on that link and receive your exercise today. And lastly, share with me in the comments which of these four tips you found most helpful or insightful. Okay, guys, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and tune in for more free content on how to get ready to launch a coaching business as an HSP or an empath. Have a great day.